What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Matt Chat Live. I'm glad to be here with my friend Ava today. Have we got some fun stuff to talk about today? Going to blow your minds, going to bring you into something you may not have thought you were going to be talking about today. But oh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about pole dancing. What? Woo. On Matt Chat Live? Yes, we're talking about pole dancing on Matt Chat Live today. It is not what you think. Well, maybe it is in some places, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Hello, Ava. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Happy Friday. Actually, I really like your intro. I haven't oh, watched that the whole way through like that, but that was cool with the countdown and the toast. That's kind of fun yeah. with the toast, right? Hopefully we're not yeah. toast. Hopefully we're like we're the bomb diggity. But that's the uh, mm. I said bomb diggity the other day. Somebody told me that you can't say that anymore. That's like two eighties. I was like, well, 80s mm. is coming back from what, from what I know. I guess I don't know. But anyway, I'm glad you're here today, Ava. And uh, you are an incredible gal. Uh, we talked already, obviously, before the show. And, uh, uh, you know, there's there's not just the fact that you're just a, a pole dancer. I mean, there's way more to Ava than than that, right? So we'll get into the pole dancing in just a moment. But um, I'd love people just get a chance to, to meet you a little bit, if you can share a little bit of who you are, what you're doing, and some of your background. And then we'll move into uh, to that topic of pole dancing after that. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, I, I'm still, uh, I'm taking an hour off of work right now. It's my lunch break, but I work in software sales. And that's the my first job and still my current job out of college. I went to work in the Bay Area. And now I'm moved back home in LA with, to stay with my parents for the quarantine time. So it's been yeah. good. We've just been eating food like every day. <laughs> and the next day is more food. <laughs> it's food and work and back to do it again. Yeah, so wild, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah. but you did, uh, you went to school too at, uh, in college, right? What was your college background? I went to San Jose State. Awesome. So, yeah, you got that, was, some, that was awesome. You got some school in there done. Now you're working in software yeah. sales and and the uh, software world. Um, but then something came along, and you uh, you kind of got the itch to do something. And it wasn't really pole dancing at first. You wanted to do something else. Mm -hmm. What was that? No. So I my mom suggested me that I try out aerial silks, yeah. which for people who don't know what that is, then just kind of imagine like in a very beginner term, like two just sheets hanging down from the ceiling. And then you just are kind of like a cat and you play on that like a yarn. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, so it's awesome. I did that for a month, but right next door was the pole dance studio. And then that's how I kind of got into it. You're like sh hanging from sheets, yeah. pole dancing, hanging from sheets, pole dancing. And yeah. you just like, check it out. You just really didn't know what it was till you got in the door and figured out what really what they were doing then, right? Yeah, the, the best exposure I got from it was when there was a student showcase of both the aerial and the pole side because they're both sister dance studios of each other gotcha. uh, under the same ownership. And then from that, I was like, oh my God, like pole dancing is so beautiful. Aerial dancing is so beautiful. And I just, I continue to- It doesn't hurt so bad when you fall more. from the pole versus when you're falling from a sheet like a hundred feet in the air though. <laughs> so it's like I haven't fell, I haven't <laughs> fell yet. And there's always a big like mattress size, maybe even double mattress size crash pad at the bottom. Oh, so nice. you're, you're safe. I would need that. I need the crash pad in either I studio. Crash pad. And I didn't want to see me pole dancing. It's just not exactly a, a great thing to think about with me with that. However, there's a lot better, better people out there. than I've seen some pole dancers, some guys, honestly, that do some stuff that just blow my mind. That's like, you got, mm -hmm. talk about abs of steel. It's like everything of steel. I don't know how people could do some of that stuff and they go sideways and they look like they're frozen in time. It's like, how in the world? That's crazy, right? Can you do any of that stuff where you like stick out there and you do those things? Oh, now that I've gotten some quarantine fluff on me, not really, if I train <laughs> back up. Like it was maybe two months ago when I did like the easier version of a flag and then, after that, I just continued eating. I so there's an easy train. version of a flag? I mean, like, you know, there's like a sideways X of a human where their legs are like this. And then they're just holding by just your hands without the armpit. And then there's like the flag with the armpit. Yeah, yeah, That's I do easier. that. Armpit. That's true. That was the easy one. I do that when I get out of bed in the morning. It's pretty simple. But uh, huh. do that from the shower curtain rod, kind of from the side. My wife gets mad at me when I do that. But uh, yeah, my family gets mad. <laughs> It's tough. Like, will you get off the shower curtain rod? Come on, Ava. <laughs> I know. It's just amazing. Morning so, arguments. 
Yeah. How long have you been doing this now? Uh, total two and a half years because I took a year off break to do uh, aerial for a while. Two and a half years, and and then you uh, you did tell me uh, earlier that it, there's competitions. Obviously, there's a lot of things that happen there, and yeah. in the two and a half years, you've actually been able to start competing in this in this right. Yes, I mean a lot of people, along with myself, like I started competing three and a half months after my first pole class, and there's other people who did the same thing. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you I don't have any pull background. But you've already gotten a few awards. You've already won a couple times, haven't you? Yeah, like my first pull competition, I got second, and then I got gold several times after that. Um, still cool. competing during quarantine too. My last one was bronze. Well, that's awesome. So a range. Yeah, yeah, they got different places to go different levels to go to right so what are some of the things you found that have been beneficial for you i mean besides that it's it's you know can be beautiful and guys we got some footage we'll show you here in a little bit but besides that it is graceful it is beautiful um i mean there are some benefits right i mean it's a good health thing it helps mm -hmm. stay fit and minus you know covid fluff you, you brought up just a moment ago right like yeah so steer away from the chips and the cereal nights but uh but have you found that that to to be something for you besides just exercise is there other things about it that you that you appreciate or yeah i like the whole journey of it like when i pick up kind of any new hobby there's like the the beginning parts where it's rocky and then you just learn a little bit more about yourself through that and then as you like in in pole dancing as i nail a new trick each time i'm like oh wow i'm maybe actually kind of like decent at this. And then also the there's the artistic side where I find it very therapeutic because mm. I'm just expressing myself. Right, right. Yeah. So it's, it, yeah, you're right. There's some great levels of, of confidence that's able to be built into your, in your life. Um, Cause yeah. I think from, from what I remember, you're not exactly like the most outgoing, talkative, look at me kind of a gal, right? And then now you're uh, going pole dancing, right? So it's it's pretty wild. But, huh? Yeah, because then kind of on stage you would have to strip down to nearly like a bikini level clothing because skin sticks to the pole and not clothes. And so <laughs> yeah. then to go from to go from again, folks, you don't want to see me pole dancing in a speedo. Just not good. Not good. Oh, I mean, a lot of men do. I'm oh, not man. against. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it just helps you stick to the pole. So yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's definitely an adventure. It's really fun. I'm, just thinking, of, I'm on thinking of some old sweaty guy. I don't know how he's sticking him. He's all oh. sweaty. <laughs> there's that Matt there's, guy. There's, there's rosin sweaty. gel that you can apply. Oh, okay. Hair. Yeah. yeah. So that's another story too. We're having some fun with this one. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> this is great. I didn't know you could put gel on. Hey, but we got some stuff to talk about. This is great. I love it. Uh, all right. So seriously though, but seriously, folks. Okay. Yeah, no, seriously, folks. Okay. <laughs> seriously, folks. All right. So there's still some fun stuff when it comes down to that. So we've got a little bit of footage here and I'd love it if you can kind of just walk us through some of the things that you're doing. Uh, obviously it's not super simple, and, uh, and to know that you've been working on this uh, for only two and a half years now is pretty amazing. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here so we can watch this. We'll go over here. We'll put you onto the side. And we will. Um, oh, are, we, are we up yet? Can I get a little bit? Oh, here we go. Sorry, I have to add to the screen. There we go. We're live, folks. You know how it goes. All right, so I'm going to turn it on and let you kind of narrate what's, go what's going on here. Okay. First, I want to give credit to my friend who is singing here. Her name is Marnie McLean, and she sang this song uh, a cappella for me. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah. So, this is my latest competition for the Pulse Sport organization last December. Wow. That's like one of those music uh, box things where the ballerina spins on the music box thing. It's pretty amazing. I don't know how worthy to that. Thank you. Thank you. That's, what, that's what someone else said, too. And um, this is also so like with this, I was not that flexible when I started pole. I, was, I, was, those legs. I yeah, I couldn't even. Maybe I was like one foot off the floor when I started. Wow. And then 
just practice stretching and training. Yeah. I was able to do decent. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I like oh. the sitting pose at the end. It's like yes. a so closure beautiful. to it. It is. It's beautiful. No, oh, I beautiful. think it's gonna restart. Yeah, I pull it like out of there, of okay. course. So, uh, yeah, that those legs things right there is like like this thing. I was like, how in the world? That's like my daughter's a dancer. She's been dancing for, yeah. for fourteen years, and she does uh, you know lots of stretching as well. And she can do all kinds of wild things like that that just make me go, ah, I don't know how it's possible. Um, but it is possible. Do you, do you go to her shows? Yeah, and... my wife does it more than I do. Yeah, um, because they uh, in in the dance world. Oh my. It's you know, mm -hmm. watch dance moms or anything like that, but that's uh, it can be quite interesting out there. And it's long; those competitions are super long. Um, you but you can weave in and out. You can, you yeah. can. For the benefit of COVID here, the last competition my daughter had, um, they did it by by the studio, and they would run through. So instead of having mm -hmm. to do all the different types of dances and different age groups and all this stuff going on, it was just like your studio is on from this time to this time and you go for it. I was like, Oh no, I can handle that one. Let's go. Mm, you know, yeah. Like that. So, but that's just uh, not as common, but that's just something they've been doing here during, during COVID to make the competitions yeah. run a little bit easier and smoother and keep social distancing, which makes a lot yeah. of sense, but uh, maybe they'll yeah. adopt some of those things later, but yes. So there's amazing. Mm -hmm. so I wonder, you know, if in your world, when it comes down to the pole dancing, well, you've got these sister studios, um, do they have these big giant competitions like that as well? You've got all kinds of different, I don't know if it's age groups or if it's different types of, cause I know in, in dancing, you've got ballet and jazz and contemporary and lyrical. And I don't know what those things would look like in that, in that arena. What, what are some of those uh, categories? There's a lot to, I mean, the whole pole world with the competitions, this is not something that I was before my first dance class, Actually, even before my first competition, this is not something I knew much about. <laughs> like me entering that, my first competition was the first time I saw what this is, how the it's all arranged. Right. So now I learned. Um, yeah, there's like five categories. There's a, a rubric uh, for like flexibility, uh, execution, um, difficulty of the transitions, or difficulty of the tricks. Um, there the flow, fluidity, and storyline of your of your piece. So um, that you can imagine there's usually like two poles on stage and then there's the, the whole public audience <laughs> and you're just kind of, That's yeah. That's the fun part, you're right? Up you're there. Up there. That's the fun you. part. <laughs> and there's, I mean, I say it's kind of like a regular dance competition, but instead of, a clear dance stage, there's two poles on there. But people wow. are like still giving off great energy, yelling, cheering, like saying like, you go girl, like, oh, like, like that yeah, was yeah. awesome. And you just kind of hear that in the crowd as you're performing. Well, that helps so, out a lot too. It just pumps you up to even do better, doesn't it? Yeah, there's like an exchange of energy between the spectator and the performer. Yeah, I no guess. doubt. Yes, yeah. I'm thinking for the, difficulties that would be me I, I would get an award for difficulty because it would be very difficult for me um i would have a word for it. i would applaud you, yes, you would say, i would be like go. i know that guy pay for effort <laughs> get some more of that gel it probably help you out a little bit better right yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly <laughs> oh right. my lord so we're obviously you know this is for real stuff and there are a lot of people that take this extremely seriously and it's a, it is a beautiful art. And I, I believe it's part of the arts. Just like it's, it is dance. It's just dancing with a dip with, with a, with an object, you have something to use, but it's really, yeah. it's um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you do all the, um, when they do tumbling and walking along. Just Gymnastics, the word. Acrobatic. Acrobatics, right? So it's acrobatics. Mm. horrible. I'm an old guy. Mm -hmm. So acrobatics, I've had two brain surgeries. Give me, yeah, I got to do a brain. Mm. Right? Mm. So it, it's a lot of those things that you have uh, that you can put together all inside of, of one one kind of sport or, or dance or expression, which is amazing. And one of the things you just mentioned was about the storyline. So for me in the business world, um, one of the things that we love in marketing is for people to be able to have a story, right? It's called story mm -hmm. brand stories in their lives. And, and you want to be able to take people on what you even said a moment ago was a journey. So for you, you're able to take people through this, this journey and this story in a matter of, 
two to four minutes. And it really comes down to obviously sometimes when you pick the song, uh, if it's got lyrics, uh, if it does have lyrics, it's definitely going to be a song that should have some kind of a journey. But you're expressing those lyrics through the way you move. Right. So there's ways mm-hmm. you're able to pull all those things together, which is really in the world of marketing and branding and what we're trying to express things to people is exactly what we're trying to do. And you just get to do that in a way that involves a movement. And movement. You know, body, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's all about movement. It's about telling that story. And, you know, do you think that uh, because of what you've done through through this experience, you think that's helped prepare you a little bit in life as you get older down the road to be able to communicate with people and to be confident and be able to experience a journey in your life and, and help others experience a journey as well? Does it help you to do that? I, I think so, because I kind of think of dance as instead of the English language is the body language. And yes. I do like it that you brought up the point of it is a storyline because for example, one of my pieces, this is one of my favorites, is when I had the storyline of, I mean, this was actually a chapter in my life and I just put it into a three minute routine. I really like this guy. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just so dorky with my big glasses. Like he's, he just really never notices me. And then I did How Will I Know by Whitney Houston. Um, oh, yeah. I did the Glee version and I, I started the storyline of how I was like feeling all dorky, but then by the end of it, I like took off my like the, the 90s spinner hat that kind of resembled of how dorky I am. And then like <laughs> just whipped it across the room and like I whipped my hair by the end of it. So there was like this three minute character development and growth that the audience like went on this journey with me on. Yes, and, come with me. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, for that piece, I got uh, first place at nationals. And so oh, wow. that did kind of put more uh, confidence in me because not really because I won first place. Part, that's a bonus point, but mostly like, oh my God, I was by myself on stage in a public place for in front of a bunch of strangers. I don't know <laughs> who they are and judges down below who, where they're, they're marking ticks on me all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and I'm in this outfit, like I was just like (laughs) going through that alone is like, once you kind of get through like weather through the storm, I come out of it more like, okay, if I can do that, I can do other things too. Wow. Ava. Okay. You just hit a hot button. That's fantastic stuff right there, Ava. So It's the fact that you came into a situation where you were unsure that you uh, it was it was nervous. You'd be nervous because you got the, the world is looking at you. Not only are they looking at you, they're they're critiquing your movements. Right. And you had a story to tell. And the only way you could do it was by putting yourself out there and you put yourself out there. And as a result, now you have this confidence that you're able to do something that you probably never did. I doubt that Ava. Mm seven, eight years ago would ever have mm-hmm. been the game that was out there on that stage at that moment. Right. And I never thought I'm like, okay, that, that like, for example, in the last video, that split move against the pole, I never thought I could do that. And then I probably would have just dismissed it. But then I'm like, okay, well, this competition date is this time and I want to include that move. So I have to train up for it. Mm. So then I, I put it in there, but yeah. just like, the little, um, what's that called? Like little victories really just adds a little, build, instills more and more self-confidence. Yes, that's right. Oh, it's fantastic. And that's just so much about life, right? And that's one of the things you've been learning through this, uh, this art and through this expression mm-hmm. in your own life. There's things now you're able to apply for life in general, right? Like what day might Ava own her own studio or maybe be seen on film one day and do something you, you never could do because you have no idea what doors will open for you if you never walk through them. And you've taken some opportunities in your own life to overcome some of those things. It wasn't that you weren't scared. It wasn't that you weren't thinking like, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do this or I wonder if I'll make the split happen or not. You just had to go for it, right? And you did. And not only did you go for it and you did it, like you said, bonus point, big bonus point. Girl got first place. I'm saying this for 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, that's that's the thing is like that's why I keep on going on uh, several podcast shows is because I hope people find their pole dancing if they were, maybe had a fear of drowning and then they've always wanted to try surfing then just like a first lesson I'm not saying get pro surfer just like a first lesson I didn't think I would be half decent at pole dancing but I was like I'm just gonna take a one hour class it's worth the one hour investment and now look at you that's amazing Ava well I'm so glad you're able to come today and share something with us today that I probably never would have shared myself on on this business <laughs> platform with talking to people about businesses and entrepreneurial stuff and scaling here we are talking about pole dancing yeah. but uh, at the end here the, the the really the icing on the cake was was the ability to find out about that journey and the steps and the processes that you were able to take in life that uh, really got to the confidence to get to where you're at today. And who knows where that's gonna take you, right? I mean, the sky is the limit and it would not have been probably if you wouldn't have taken some of those steps. So thanks for sharing that with us today, Ava. It's been a joy to meet you and I'm glad the folks had a chance to see you and learn a bit about pole dancing, right? So maybe it's not pole dancing for you, like Ava said, whatever your, your pole dancing might be. Uh, yeah. unless you actually start doing it like maybe she talked about the serpent thing right maybe you're afraid to go well then go to a whirlpool first right get your feet wet right you gotta get your feet wet first <laughs> and then you could go to the serpent thing later but uh it's one step at a time and yeah. uh i'm so proud of you ava for what you've been able to accomplish and i'm excited to hear about what happens next lord knows when this COVID stuff gets over and done with we could finally get back to some some really interesting things and i'm sure yeah. we'll be hearing some great stuff from you down the road even awesome. though your day job is still working at the old software place, but uh, I yeah. think that there's, there's way more in store for Ava than just just working at the software place. But oh. thanks for uh, for being here with us today. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Matt. This was a lot of fun. So. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That was good. Yeah, we were worried about the front side, but man, this has been great, right? I mean, we had a good time, and I think it's fun. We were talking about pole dancing. Who's going to talk about pole dancing? We're talking yeah, about pole, pole dancing. dancing. Talk about pole dancing. <laughs> Chat live talk about pole dancing. That's right. Hey, <laughs> thanks again so much for being here today. We appreciate you. If there's one thing you tell folks after everything we've just talked about that would give them some some inspiration, what might that be? I'd say just no expectations, just trying whatever you're interested in is mm. is I think it's worth the time and energy. Yeah. No we'll see where it goes from there. Just do it right just go for it no expectations whatever happens happens that's good all mm. right that's so good thanks again ava and thank you everybody for being with us again for another episode of matt chat live bye-bye <laughs>